Hey everybody, this is William from the Godzilla Files coming at you today with a new movie review. And today we're going to be looking at the colorized version of King Kong. While pretty controversial back in the day, this has kind of become like a novelty item. Many people think still look for it. And it is pretty interesting to sit down and watch. So I thought this would kind of be a fun thing considering that King Kong's 85th anniversary had just passed. So, you know, before we jump into this review, I want to just kind of talk about the history of King Kong as related to me. King Kong is one of the most important films I've ever seen. I put it up there with movies like Wizard of Oz and also Star Wars. This is a film that really got me into movies and I believe my dad showed it to me so you know he, he had a, a knack for picking out movies that I would really like. It was one of his favorite films growing up and he wanted to show it to me and it was one of my favorite films. You know it has everything you know a boy like me would want. Dinosaurs, a giant monster, a beautiful woman and was completely mind-blowing and I think for the most part many people would agree it's one of the best films ever made. From a technical point with the whole stop motion and just everything that they managed to do in a film back in the 1930s. But uh, yeah, so why don't we just jump right into this review. Alright, so speaking about the colorized version, it's really important just to note that the overall film is exactly the same as what you had seen in the original black and white. So there's no added scenes, so nothing really deleted, or anything like that. So really the big change is obviously just everything being colorized. And I think overall, the colorization went very well. You have to remember this was kind of done in the 80s, I think about mid 80s or so, and going back and colorizing black and white films was something that Ted Turner was doing, and you know, it was just kind of the start of this. So, you know, for being one of the first films for this to be done, it was actually pretty good. I think there are areas that they could have done better, but I think overall, I thought it was pretty well done. Some of the things that really stick out to me are the scenes before they go into the jungle. You know, all that leading up to that point looks amazing to me. I really don't have any issues with it. You know, everything looks real to me. You know, they didn't make outrageous colors and different things like that. New York itself looked very real. What Fay Ray was wearing looked great. You know, everything kind of just made the world feel like a real place, which was, you know, what it should do. No, never takes you out of it. And also the scenes when they bring Kong back are is another area where I think they really succeeded with this colorization. I would say, you know, seeing Kong getting shot down is actually harder to watch in the colorized version than the black and white. Seeing the red, you know, from the blood and everything like that is really shocking in many ways. Uh, it's hard to kind of describe. It's like watching the scene for the first time all over again. And, you know, it really does add something to it. So, you know, if anything, if you guys get a chance, at least watch this film once because I think it's really important. So, you know, and, and the colorization adding things to this film really makes it fun to watch. And, and that's why I really do suggest, you know, watching it at least one time. Now, the film does take place on Skull Island for most of its runtime. So, kind of talking about that, I think this is where the colorization kind of has some difficulties. You know, there is a lot of green in this film. You know, without a doubt, that's probably the most popular color. And I think that causes some of the issues that we see in the film. You know, when they're walking through the jungle, everything is green around them. And everything kind of just blends in all together. So I think that really does cause some issues. You know, it's, it's not as crisp as I would have liked it to be. You know, the depth of, of the shots and things like that aren't there anymore. But on the flip side, when the Stegosaurus is coming at them, that looks great. I actually really like that scene in color. Some other areas that I really like, Kong looks good. His color and everything like that works perfectly. You know, even when he's kind of rolling around and things like that in his fights, he never it never looks bad for the most part. I should just note this. My copy was actually a DVD. So I've seen other clips on YouTube and it looks terrible. And maybe they came from the VHS. I don't know, but I have a pretty good quality on mine. So I think that does help a little bit here. But not everything works. I think the T-Rex being pink doesn't really make much sense to me. You know, it just, it's kind of weird. And I think sometimes in their fight, the color kind of gets lost. The other part too is that some of the trees are like yellow instead of a brown. And this is kind of where colorization becomes weird and hard to do. You know, they don't do the colorization with like the original producers or the writers or the directors. And they, they even state that in the beginning of this. So it's someone's interpretation of someone else's work. And black and white films, you know, we all have maybe a different idea on what color everything was. And that's where things kind of get tricky. And that's one of the biggest knocks, I would say, towards this film, is that there are moments where I don't believe the colorization is correct. I, they picked the wrong colors, in my opinion. You know, overall, though, you know, there's, it's hard to <laughs> fault this movie. You know, it's trying to do something. It's trying to be almost like an extra, I would say, like something unique. It, it's not trying to be better than the original, which I don't think it ever will be 
movie and people shouldn't look at it that way but it's something to kind of go back and maybe see King Kong in a different light which I think that's all they all trying to do and I can't fault them for that so if you ever do get a chance I would strongly recommend picking this up because as a Kong fan and also as just a kaiju fan in general yes I do consider Kong somewhat of a kaiju you know this is a film that you should definitely want to take a look at all right everybody I hope you enjoyed this look at the colorized version of King Kong let me know in the comments below if you've seen this film before and what your thoughts are but as always guys I will talk to you all later